What's up everybody? In today's video, I wanted to review the book Life After Google by George Gilder. And I first heard about the book Life After Google on the James Altucher podcast, which I frequently mention on this channel. And I hadn't, I hadn't really heard about it before then, which is kind of interesting because I don't understand why people, people are so concerned with Facebook and privacy. So I was amazed more people haven't really talked about this book. And I looked into it a little bit and I read that it's also about blockchain and Bitcoin and cryptography, which I've been getting into recently. So, so I, I really wanted to read it then. And I, oh, I didn't, oh, that's another thing. I don't have the book because I didn't actually read it. I listened to it on audiobook and I didn't buy the audiobook either. I, you know, I guess you're noticing by now that I get a lot of my books from libraries and I listened to it on audiobook um, from an app, Hoopla, from the, I'm able to use from my library which is pretty awesome. It's like a 10 hour book, audio book, and it's pretty awesome they have it on there. And it's extremely popular on Amazon. It's like 30 bucks still on there, even though it's been uh, almost a year since it came out. But the book is really good. It's it's really amazing. It's amazing for so many reasons. For me personally, it's because like, because of all the privacy stuff happening with Google and Facebook and you know even Amazon, you don't know what they're doing with your data. We all think, and. Another thing is like Elon Musk and Tesla, you think all these things are going to just steal all of our data, make all of us humans obsolete. We're all gonna be out of a job. We're all gonna be in like a Terminator type war against this artificial intelligence. And George Gilder really proves that that's not, that's not the case. That there's gonna be a lot of changes and the changes are already happening. And he really cuts it down to like the base level. He, he, and it's not just like him saying, I hate Google, the government's gonna regulate them. The government's gonna come in and break them up. It's not like that. He's talking about like basically a customer led revolution and just people in general are going, are can't be conquered by these Silicon Valley guys and, and all their philosophies and he goes and that's really something he goes over is their philosophies like how they came to believe it and where all their insights originated from and he goes like back to like information theory the theory of chips and like how much data that they can you know this tech stuff how much data they can perform and all that and i recently built my own computer too so when he started talking about like graphics cards and all that stuff that was pretty cool um but yeah he basically says like the problem with Google is that they just try, Google and other people like them, like Facebook, they just try and like acquire all of our data and just like keep it in one central place and there's no security. And that eventually that's gonna be their undoing. And, but the problem is like their philosophy is they think that they're smarter than everybody and that people are just dumb, dumb people or just these dumb bots that can be figured out and replicated and put into a chip or put into a computer and that those computers are gonna do everything. It's basically the same like humans were too creative and it's too hard for computers to ever get to that creativity level. And there's like too many barriers until it gets there. So there's not really these, these companies that are talking about machine learning or artificial intelligence they're just like pattern, they're just recognizing patterns. And that's something too that I heard recently on another podcast was like, how much of today would you realize is different than from the 70s? Like if you were, if you were transported in the 70s to now, like what would, how much would be different? There's a lot of things that are different like computers, but other than that, like, you know, there's not too many things different. Like cars aren't flying around, you're not teleporting, you don't have like, you know, you're not, you don't have like minority report type stuff. So it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of advances, but there's also like a lot of, there's also a lot of things that have not advanced. And the same thing with Google, right? They have all this data and they're tracking us and they could, they have these prediction models and we're so predictable, but how come they can't predict mass shootings? How come they can't predict President Trump winning the, the president they don't like? and prevent that. They're obviously trying to do that now, but how come they didn't do that then, right? All these things that they claim that they can do, how come they can't do it? And he also talks about like Tesla and their self-driving cars and how that, and how Tesla's going down the wrong route. And that all these companies are just 
they, they think that they, they can do everything through software, but it's not actually software that's the future, it's hardware. And that's what Google needs in order to store all this stuff is hardware. And the thing is the costs are gonna become so high and computing costs, the actual hardware costs to absorb all the data, analyze it is like so expensive for them. And heating is gonna be a problem and the chip advances are gonna be a problem. And it's, it's and the, they're gonna have it all in one place, which is their company for easy for hackers to take. And like, we're gonna get fed up with that. And the solution to it, there's a good thing is like blockchain because blockchain is everybody like normal people with nor with regular computers and phones we could all work together and create search engines create browsers like brave browser and we can create things and verify things ourselves and we can and another thing is like rendering another thing is like videos i do videos so it takes me forever to like render it on my own in my editing software, but he's like, that'll be on the blockchain. It'll go so much faster in the future. So it's like all these advances that are helped by the blockchain, including money, money and transactions. We don't have to have banks and central banks and federal reserves in there anymore. And it's the people, the people through the blockchains are going to be the future. We're going to make things better. We're going to secure our own information. We're not going to have to have a million passwords. We're not going to have to have go through Google's ads, their YouTube, the, all this adware on the internet, the malware, all this stuff. Like, it's going to be a lot. We're going to decentralize a lot of the things in the world. So it's and it's, but it's also like the philosophy. We believe it because the news makes us believe it. Is that Google is the end all be all. They're absorbing all of our data and there's nothing we can do about it. And they're smarter than us. And it's only a matter of time before the machines take over. But I like this book. Or I like listening to this book because George is like, we're humans. We're creative. We're created by God. And I believe that as well. And that, and that machines can't do that. They're not able to do that because they can't. They can't like analyze themselves because they are the computer. And like humans have the ability to do that. Computers can't do that. And right now they're not even on the path to do that. There's things that they can do like pattern recognition, but being able to be creative and create things like we can is not something that they will be able to do. And even if they can, it's gonna take a tremendous amount of hardware that doesn't exist on the scale that Google and others need today. So I definitely recommend this book. And if you're sitting there scared about the future of Google and Facebook, then then I would definitely recommend reading this or buy an audio book. The audio book is great. The narrator of the audio book is great. I forget his name, but it's great. So I would definitely recommend going out and reading it. And it's also like if you're if you invest in Bitcoin or blockchain or any crypto stuff or interested in learning about it or interested in learning about technology that Google uses. Like it's amazing how much he knows about their data centers, about their philosophies and everything. It's just a great book. George Gilder's great. This book is great. Um, I even started reading another one of his books and that one's good too. So, so yeah, definitely go out there and check out Life After Google.